video number three. Welcome to Aslan. I'm Aslan. If you didn't remember from last time, this is my mini series about learning how to mend your own clothes um, and also give a little service to somebody else. Make someone stay brighter. So anyways, this video is going to be about um, darning. This is like one of the most interesting sewing techniques that I've ever heard of. It's called darning. So basically what darning is, is you're using a needle and thread to patch a hole, right? It can be like a circular hole. It could be like just like a tear in the fabric. You know, you can use it for like any kind of hole pretty much. Um, basically don't, if you have a hole like that, don't expect um, your end result, your end product to be looking exactly the same as it would brand new, right? That's, that can't happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not going to. No matter how hard I try, it doesn't happen. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. I don't know. Not me. Um, basically, but it does repair your hole, right? So it does fix everything. And you're not going to just like have a draft through like the hole of your shirt, right? Your armpit hole. I don't know. I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent. Anyways, basically, you're like creating like a weaving pattern, basically. You're like going in and out with your needle, like, and crossing each other so that it like weaves the fabric together, right? With the thread that you just sewed into it. That is like such a bad explanation, but that's the only way that I can like really, I don't know, like tell you about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, maybe I'm not the best teacher for this, but it's super interesting anyways. And I think it's really cute, especially like the effect that it was able to create on his little cheeks. That's where you actually see it. Like, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this is actually like a hole that we're going to be cutting into his cheek, right? See the pink part in the middle? Um, and then I put some pink felt in behind that right like i stuffed it into the hole to like plug it up magical right and then i sewed over top of it i sewed through both layers of fabric right and then it covered up the hole and you can't even like feel that it's there anymore right it's like part of the fabric now um i think it's really really useful technique especially if you're um, somebody with young kids who are always ripping their clothes <laughs> uh, or very, very, um, clumsy like me. That's, that's why I, I need stuff like this. Um, basically, and oh, another tip, you don't have to use contrasting colors of like thread and like the stabilization fabric they use underneath it. Um, you can actually use the same color and then just kind of blend it in so it looks like from a distance it looks like perfect. It doesn't look like you did anything to it. But you're really, um, on this one I decided to use contrasting colors because I was like kind of trying to make it cute, you know? Like in real life you probably wouldn't do that. Um, unless you wanted to. Unless you wanted to be like extra and use like, like gold thread. If you wanted to use gold thread on your jeans, I think that would be like so cool. I would like think you're probably like the coolest person I know, but yeah, unless you want to go for something decorative then that's awesome. Okay, for darning, you don't need anything fancy or specific. Um, basically, if you're not doing it on something that already has like stuffing in it, like um, a blanket or like a comforter, you know, or a stuffed animal or something like that, then you're gonna need something like hard to go underneath it. Like a lot of people use mason jar lids or they also have like a darning mushroom, which people actually use, but I would rather just like go with the cheap option and like find something around your house, right? That's what I would do. Um, <laughs> and then you can just like, how do I, how do I show this, right? Let's say, I, w I wanted to, like, I had a hole in this apron, right? So basically what I would do is I would put 
the jar or lid or whatever underneath it and then I would hold the fabric tight like pretend there's a hole right there I would hold the fabric tight and then I would weave um, my needle and thread through the fabric to patch up the hole right because you just want it to be like flat and tight on there so that it's not like uneven when you take it off that's the reason why you need like um something hard to like a hard surface to put it on right um basically that's it that you need for darning and i hope you enjoy this video okay this is the perfect place to start so basically what you want to do is cut off just like little tiny pieces of felt right in whatever color you want i chose this like beautiful coral color but basically what you want to do is just like figure out where we want to put them and then we're going to cut a hole into our bear i know that doesn't sound like a good idea but <laughs> it, it's going to turn out good i promise trust the process um, it's a little bit scary at first, but trust me, it'll turn out good. And you can see right here, I'm just like making the hole bigger. I first cut like just a little slit in the fabric and then I like made it into like a hole, you know? Ah, uh, oh no, he's got holes in his face now, but it's okay. We're going to fix it. Don't worry. Okay, this next part can be a little bit tricky, so just take your time. You're going to want to take those little tiny scraps of felt, right, and stick them into the holes that you just made. Um, you can use a needle like you see here um, to help you kind of like position the felt in there so it's not, um, so it's all lying flat because really what this is doing is you're creating like a stable foundation for your stitches right so they're not like moving everywhere um and so that you actually have like some fabric there you know or else it's just a hole with like a couple little stitches covering it which is not very sturdy so you need some kind of stabilization fabric um like i said in the beginning you'd probably want to choose something um that is like matches or is a similar color to your fabric that you're going to be using like in real life but if it's just decorative like this is then feel free to use whatever you like okay this is important too you always want to go inside of the fabric so that you're like put your first um stab your needle through the underside of the fabric I don't know how to explain that but you kind of saw what I did where I didn't just like stick my needle straight into the fabric I kind of went under um, because I wanted to hide the tail end of the thread um, now you see that I'm just like weaving back and forth um, several times at once through the fabric right so that's super super simple um, it doesn't take any like skill really or practice just make sure that you're going slowly if this is your first time and just going back and forth catching both layers of fabric the brown layer and the pink layer right um and just making sure that it's really sturdy really strong you've got this that this was in real time for you guys because that's gonna make it like 10 times easier for you to follow along and just to show you how like once you get a little bit better at doing this how much easier it is you know like how easy it actually is to do this um i've only done darning like two or three times but every single time i notice myself getting better you know so just trust trust yourself um Try not to stab yourself <laughs> and just go for it.
okay, now we're going to start on that hat, uh, like hatch hatching that I was telling you about. Um, so, or like weaving together of the thread. So you're, you went one way the first time, right? And now you're going to take it in like the opposite direction, like make it like, um, what do they call that? Parallel? No, not parallel. I can't remember the word. Don't ask me. <laughs> no. Um, I swear I'm not dumb. Basically, you want to just go like so opposite to the way that you were sewing before. And it creates this like really strong, just like fabric, you know, like layer. So it, yeah, it all works. Just do it. <laughs> that like I keep going out of frame I really need to work on that like you have to understand these are like the first videos that I've ever made on YouTube so understand that these are not quality <laughs> I feel so bad but thanks for hanging in there um I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit so that you guys don't have to be sitting here watching uh forever <laughs> finishing up our darning and basically since we have like a button that we can hide this under what I'm doing is I'm stabbing into the fabric and then out um through the fabric where underneath where the eye is so that um the tail of the thread is hidden right so I that's a really good trick you can totally hide the tail ends of your thread under like a decoration or a seam and that's a really useful tip too see you can't even see where i put it it's great all right now we're at the end of our video thank you so much for watching and make sure to come back for part four to learn how to finish up this little bear